Cathcart here from the Curious Piano Teachers. And you might have recognised that piece which was Innocence by Bergmüller from his Opus 100. And this video is the first of several looking at some of the pieces, some of the studies that you'll find in the Opus 100 book. So first of all I wanted to give you a little bit of background about Opus 100, about Bergmüller, and what inspired him basically to write these pieces. Opus 100 is one of the standard works I think in any piano teacher's um, core repertoire that you bring out. Bergmüller was um, I think born in Germany but he lived most of his life actually in Paris so he was a contemporary for many years of, of Chopin and he although he's known these days for his piano pieces in particular for his studies. He actually, before he devoted himself just to the piano, he also wrote ballets and he wrote operas. And there's a, a, a lovely ballet you can watch on YouTube with Rudolf Nureyev. And I think understanding that he was a ballet writer, a writer of ballet music, can really add some depth to understanding his pieces. You know, we have uh, arabesque, we have uh, gracefulness, we have the Styrian dance from Austria and Tarantella, all of which keep ballet in mind and then you suddenly understand this a little bit more. Because he lived most of his life in, in Paris, uh, all the pieces have been given French titles. The one I just played you is called Innocence, uh, Innocence, um, and all of them, La Pastorelle, for example, is number three, which is pastoral, uh, L'Arabesque, the arabesque etc etc just want to talk for a second about the um, the different editions that you can find of this because it's such a popular set of studies you will find all sorts of editions and it is really really worthwhile getting a very good solid edition of which there are several i've got about four different editions here i've got the alfred edition uh, which have been edited by Willard Palmer and that's that's um, that's nice and clear on the page I have to say on the whole uh, the shot again it's a performance edition and this is by Margaret Optwell being edi um, edited this is on cream paper so maybe suitable for people who find the white a little bit uh, stark and again a good edition there is an ABRSM edition in their easiest piano pieces and that's again a reliable edition. Mine is a very old and battered copy because this is the very first one I had. But the, the edition I use these days mostly is the Shot Universal Edition, the Orange Book. Um, there are other editions available, of course. What I like about these is they've got some very, very good teaching notes, very thorough teaching notes for each and every piece. So it's worth the investment, not necessarily to give to your students, but for you, the teacher always worth investing in a good edition because then you begin to understand it and you can get more insight into it. So um, what else was I going to tell you about it? Yeah, okay, I, I want to tell you about three different uh, uh, things which is to do with some general points about phrasing, another point about the metronome marks and also about the fingering. These studies, Bergmüller composed at a time where there were a lot of uh, composers writing studies, producing studies. Churn it out, Cherny, as I like to say. Cherny, of course, was the one who was really producing masses and masses of studies. And of course, you get the likes of Hannon. Now, most of these are really, frankly, quite boring, not very musical. The Bergmüller are different, they stand apart um, in the same way, of course, that the Chopin etudes do because they have musicality written all the way through them. No matter that there is a, um, a technical point behind each and every study, it's the musicality that really shines through and makes them such a winner for us as piano teachers because our students really, really love playing these. They feel good to play, they feel musical, they make them feel like a pianist rather than sitting there slightly with the drudgery idea on. So let's get to uh, firstly about slurs and phrasing. Now you'll find that in some editions, not very good editions, um, and maybe early editions, 
which weren't urtext, urtext meaning going back to the original of Bergmüller. So if it's not an urtext, you've got to be careful because you might find that the editor has changed the slurs, etc., etc. Now, the slurs and the phrase marks are there to play legato, we all know that, but actually, and this is general stylistic convention anyhow, it's much more than that, because it's about connecting the notes in a musical gesture. Let's take, for example, the arabesque, these five notes. Yeah, those five notes. They, the slur over them indicates that that is the gesture that is required. So if you to teach them, then you're making life very hard, both musically and from a technical point of view. It's the gesture, the down up with the notes traveling underneath the hand and uh, carried by the arm. And that is the technique that you want to develop. Yeah. So look at the slurs, get an air text edition, look at the slurs. Remember, they have an expressive perspective. That's the point of them, to be expressive. So, phrase marks, really important. It's the artistry. Oh yeah, that was the other thing I wanted to say. Think about string players. Duddle along, duddle. It's a down and up, all in one. It's not da 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 da. Diggy diggy dum, diggy diggy dum. The other point I wanted to make now is about the metronome mark. So, it is generally accepted, I think, that the metronome marks are somewhat faster than modern interpretations. So we will tend to play slightly slower. And again, in this particular edition, the uh, shot universal edition, the editor has suggested metronome marks. So for example, with the arabesque, I'll just get my metronome up here. With the arabesque, 100 and I think that's right, Bergmuller has said 152, which is this. too nippy because you lose the clarity I think there and instead 132 has been uh, 152 yeah, 132 only a little bit lower Because the fingering that is marked in is Bergmuller's fingering in that Urtext edition that you're going to get. And it is there for a technical purpose. I'm going to highlight that with number four, which is La Petite Réunion. And in it, in bar 10, there are a, 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 string, of, a string of thirds which go. Sorry, I'll do that again lands on five and three so the string of thirds is all marked in after the first one it is four two four two four two lovely technical idea to develop in your students of again it's the arm carrying the fingers through to those top notes so do observe the fingering Look at that first. I'm not saying absolutely stick to it like like uh, like glue, but look at that because it is there for a purpose. And if the hand doesn't fit, then obviously adapt it. But keep the technical purpose in mind. So that's the end of this first video, this technical overview or this broad overview of the pieces. I want to just point out that we are including, we're giving away uh, a whole analysis overview of the the set all 25 pieces in the set and in this um, overview you can see the titles of the piece you can see the key you can see the time signature you can see the tempo markings etc etc and so that gives you a good sense really of the whole set and what you might use it for thank you so much for watching do join me in the next video bye for now